I'm excited to welcome you to the absolute best video on the switch statement you'll find anywhere on YouTube. In this video, I cover everything you need to know in detail and use interactive animations, beautiful illustrations, and professional editing to ensure you remain engaged in order to maximize your learning. So let's jump in. So I wanna start off by looking at if statement conditions before we talk about the switch statement. If statements can handle a range of simple and complex conditions. They can handle comparison, where we have relational comparison, like score greater than 50. And they can handle equality comparison, like class strictly equals the string business. If statements can also handle logical conditions, like logical and, for example, total price greater than 60 and is member. They can handle logical or, like total price greater than 60 or is member. And they can handle logical not, like is not a member. Now the equality comparison is a special case, and we have specific syntax to write this in another way. We do that with the switch statement. Now I want to flag straight away that the switch statement is not commonly used. If statements are a lot more popular, and is what I'll be using throughout the course, but to give you a complete picture of JavaScript, it is important to know that they exist and what they are. In my full stack bootcamp, we will be using a switch statement much later on in the React section. So a switch statement is used for comparing a single value against multiple possible cases. To demonstrate this, I'm gonna be going through the status of shipping an order on an e-commerce website. Let's say we have a variable, let order status equal the string shipped. We can then use our switch statement to look at different cases. And it looks like this. We have the JavaScript switch keyword, and then inside our brackets, we have the value to be compared. Inside our curly brackets, we then go through the different cases. For case one, we'll be comparing the order status to the string value pending. You can see here we use the case keyword and the case keyword is followed by the value compared. If the case is pending, we would execute some code like console.log your order is pending. The code inside the case is always followed by the break keyword. The break keyword effectively breaks the switch statement so it ends here and won't continue assessing other cases. So let's break down the logic inside case to see what's happening. Now we're comparing order status to the case pending. So it looks like this, order status strictly equals pending. And that's why the switch statement is specifically used for equality comparison, because behind the scenes, that's what's happening. We have order status strictly equal to pending. The current value assigned to order status is shipped. So this is shipped strictly equals pending. And the result of this is false. So this case won't run. We then move on to our next case, where we look at cased shipped, and we'll output to the console, your order is shipped. And once again, we need the break keyword to stop the switch statement if this case is true. Looking at the logic, we now have order status strictly equal to shipped, where shipped is the case we're looking at. The value stored in order status in our example is shipped. So we have shipped strictly equal to shipped, which is true. So this code block would run and we would get outputted to the console, your order is shipped. We can then continue on with as many cases as we like. And very similar to a catch all else statement, a switch statement has the default. This is the default keyword and it outputs a catch all. That is, if none of our conditions are met, pending or shipped, we can output some code like unknown order status. Now an important note, for default, we don't need to use the break keyword. All right, so let's go play around with this inside VS code. So I've gone ahead and set up an index.html file and linked a JavaScript file script.js, which is currently empty. So for this example, I'm gonna use a switch statement for when a user logs in to a web application to direct them to the correct place, depending on who they are. I'm gonna declare a variable, let user role, and I'm gonna assign the value admin. I then grab our switch keyword and the value to be compared to our case is going to be user role. I'll then grab our curly brackets and I'm gonna write the first case by grabbing the case keyword and the case is gonna be admin. I grab a colon, hit enter, and I'm gonna to output to the console, console.log redirect to admin dashboard. And then I'll add our break keyword. So if the admin logs in, they're gonna be taken to the admin dashboard. I'm gonna add another case. We'll be checking the value editor. That is a user who is not an admin, but is able to log in and edit content on the web page. I'll grab a colon and I'll write console.log redirect to content editing page and then add the break keyword. For the next case, I'll have subscriber, which is a user who has paid and subscribed to access the platform. And for this case, I'll put console.log 
redirect to user dashboard. And then of course I add my break keyword. For the final case, I'm gonna grab default, which acts as the catch all. I'm just gonna output console.log redirect to login page. So this is for a case for a user is not able to log in anywhere. All right, let's check this out in the console. So you can see here, we have redirect to admin dashboard. That's because our user role is set as admin. So this case is running over here. And what's happening behind the scenes is we have user role strictly equal to admin. Because user role has the value admin, we have admin equal to admin, which is the Boolean value true. So this case runs over here. If I change this value to subscriber and refresh, you'll see we get redirect to user dashboard. So this now runs by the same logic. Just to step through what happens as we move through this, we have user role strictly equal to admin for the first case. User role is subscriber. This is false. So this case won't run. The same thing happens over here. We have user role equals editor. The value of user role is subscriber. Subscriber does not strictly equal editor, so that's false. And therefore this won't run. This case will run because we have user role equals subscriber. The value of user role is subscriber. So we have subscriber equals subscriber, which is true, which means that this case will run. Now, just to show you an example of the default being executed, if I change user role to a value which isn't here, something like guest and refresh, you'll see we get redirect to login page. These three cases don't cover guest, so we just output the default, taking them back to the login page in order to log in. So now the question becomes, when should I be using if statements versus switch statements? If statements are generally preferred over switch statements as they can handle a range of simple and complex conditions. As I've already mentioned, we don't really use switch statements that much. If statements are a lot more versatile and give us a lot more flexibility to handle all kinds of cases. But let's take a look at an example of where a switch statement and if statement perform the same logic. I'm just gonna be looking at the switch statement we looked at previously that is displaying a message depending on an order status. We can write the exact same thing using an if statement, and it would look like this, where we're using the strict equality to compare order status to our different cases, that is pending and shipped. And instead of default, we just have a catch all else. So anything you can write with a switch statement, you can also write with an if statement, but it doesn't happen the other way around. Not everything you can write with an if statement, you can write with a switch statement. In fact, the only kind of logic you can handle with a switch statement is equality comparison. You can't do relational comparison or any logical operators. All right, so I know that we've looked at a lot of different ways of handling decision-making in our code. So let's finally do a comparison of if versus switch versus the ternary operator. If statements work for all conditions, while switch statements and the ternary operator are for specific cases. I'm gonna be summarizing it in this table here, where we'll be looking at single, binary, and multiple conditions and different operators. I'm gonna be filling up this table with what's possible to do with if, switch, and the ternary operator. Let's look at the if statement first, where I'm gonna be using this pinky tick. An if statement can handle all of these. We can do all conditions and use all operators. And that's why it's the most preferred and most versatile of all the different decision-making we can do in JavaScript. For the switch statement, I'm gonna be using this blue tick, and the switch statement can handle single, binary, and multiple conditions only for equality comparison. So the switch statement has a limited use case when performing equality comparisons. And as I've already mentioned, I wouldn't worry too much about it as it isn't that commonly used compared to the if statement. Now for the ternary operator, I'm gonna put this in green. The ternary operator can handle all operators, but only for binary conditions. That is, we get an outcome from one of two. Now, as we've looked at in a previous video, the ternary operator is specifically used in two cases, for conditional variable assignment and writing messages. So I just wanted to provide a table to summarize the different ways of handling decision-making in our code. And I really just wanted to highlight the if statement is your go-to for implementing core decision-making logic in your program. The ternary operator is used in very specific cases and the switch statement, I wouldn't worry too much about, but I just wanted you to know what it is and how it works. So let's wrap up by building a summary card, the switch statement. The switch statement checks one value against multiple possible equal matches. We saw this example of the switch statement, where for each case, we were comparing the value of order status to each case. 
where behind the scenes, JavaScript is performing a strict equality comparison. So a switch statement is an alternative to if statements using equality-based conditions. If you've enjoyed this style of teaching and are looking at mastering JavaScript, you can join me in my JavaScript full course, which is available for free on my channel. The course is designed for complete beginners and covers everything you need to know to code JavaScript at a professional level. In the course, you'll experience the same high quality teaching and build a whole range of real life projects from scratch. Join me today and also make sure to subscribe to the channel to stay in the loop with new releases. See you in the JavaScript full course.